So we're in December, which means that, you know, we're going to start the year-end wrap-up kind of things, actually, in a couple of weeks, you know, using it. Uh, you know, the top ten of the, of the year, blah, that, that whole kind of thing, you know. Um, so maybe I'm going to get a jump on it. But there's um, there's stuff happening, uh, but I have to um, um, really filter this, this stuff. There's so much stuff happening in the world. Um, you know, um, I'm, for instance, the whole Honduras thing, I don't want to report on that. I don't want to say anything about that right now. That's still playing itself out, you know, Honduras. That's what that flag is right there. Um, there's a whole uh, Zimbabwean thing, you know what I mean? Again, gotta wait, let that all play itself out, there's stuff happening. Um, there's uh, uh, there's the whole African, well, there's a lot of stuff happening right here. Okay, now then, then the other thing I, 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 I've been thinking about lately is whole this, well, very, very slight, this whole uh, sexual kind of thing happening. The latest thing, not the latest thing I, I heard, uh, was that uh, uh, Professor Griff had this thing uh, talking about at some particular point a couple of years ago. Um, what's that boy's name? Uh, Russell Simmons, you know, Def Jam, uh, brother to Re Reverend Run and all of us, you know, Run DMC kind of out of that thing. Def, you know, you know, you know those guys. You know, the, the, the billionaire, the mogul or whatever it is, the hip hop mogul. Um, anyway, uh, he uh, is, was exposed at whatever he's. This sexual harassment, rape, whatever, whatever the deal is, and he fessed up real quick, you know, and and you, you know, or stopped real quick. And I was trying to figure out what it was, but at some particular point, a couple of years ago, what happened was he had made this porno, um, call, calling that something about Harriet Tubman and porno was kind of strange, you know, uh, and and he got a lot of flack for it at the time, but it's just coming out now. So I'm figuring what happened was he didn't want that to hit again. So we just to squash this stuff right now. But it's interesting that this moguls, I, I may have mentioned this a long time ago, but um, when I was an arts director, of, well, when I was working for WBAI, and I would do a lot of recordings and stuff like that. I do a lot of specials, uh, audio recordings and stuff. Well, one of the, uh, well, one of the things that we did, uh, Jeannie Hopper, TJ Jeannie Hopper, uh, uh, Peace and Blessings, Jeannie, hope to see you sometime, maybe this year I can get to boat ride and have some time off, whatever it is. Um, but uh, we did this, uh, we did this audio documentary on, um, what do you call those, a uh, dominatrix, you know. And what was interesting, and, and usually it would, uh, when they did these audio dominatrix uh, things, they'd like, like a half hour long, so you have to get all this tape, I get a lot, like maybe three hours, five hours worth of tape, and you distill it down to 30 minutes. That was my job, that's what I did, that was my expertise. But anyway, uh, when you find out by doing this dominatrix thing that and when we talk interviewing the, the, the folks, what we realize is that um, uh, most of the people that, that were subjected themselves to dominatrix, they were like powerful people, you know, like bankers and judges and politicians and, you know, that kind of uh, really powerful people. So there's something that happens when you get this much power. The, uh, you know, either you want to be dominated or, or, or you get into this realm of this really um, stuff, you know, pedophilia, all, you know, all this sexual kind of stuff. You know, there's some weird thing that, that, that happens with, with powerful people or when you get into positions of power, you think you have power. Um, I mean, at one particular point, I'm sorry to go on, but I have to really go on. At one particular point, I was thinking about, um, I don't want to mention his name because I, I like the cat, but anyway, this guy, he's entertainer, I'll just leave it at that, and when he went to Hollywood, you know, he got busted, uh, he busted doing some 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 stuff it wasn't it was like pornography you know like that it wasn't like rape or something like that uh, but I I immediately thought I said well you know uh, it involved a real like, like usually with, with, with porno you know you're reading the magazine that's one thing but if you have the wherewithal to see that magazine come to life you know in other words you you um, uh, you have somebody. Uh, that's a, like homophrodite, let's put it that way. Say you're into homophrodites, you know, you don't want anybody to know. Uh, so, so, so what happens is when you do, what, what happens is now, so you've been looking at a, a, a two-dimensional picture of somebody, right? But then homophrodite, you, you can have a three-dimensional picture of that same picture, they, so they come off the page, you know. Um, bear with me, I know it's kind of long here. Well, what happens with that, you have the money now, so like uh, uh, to pay, to say, $20 for a magazine, well, if you have a lot of money, is if you pay uh, two thousand dollars to see a real live person, it's like sort of the same thing for the for the, for the income that you're, you're you're getting because you're famous. You have all this money, you can throw it away. So, um, so I look at that 
that kind of thing. And I'm saying that a lot of this stuff has to do with people just have so much money that they think they can do anything they want and control people because we're all about the money, the money, the money, the money, the money, the money you know? Okay, so let me leave that one alone. I'm, I'm through with that topic. But there is one topic, you know, I, I mentioned this a few weeks ago too, and then I was um, waiting in somebody's living room and they had the TV on, they had the cartoons, and they had these like cartoon characters look like like little, um, like animals kissing on each other. No, it was a, a, a like a little boy cartoon character, and then they was kissing on this creature kind of thing. So you have the bestiality, and this is in cartoons, but remember, everything is based on cartoons. I used to tell people uh, a long time ago, the reason why uh, for a long time in the 60s, even the 70s, even to the 80s, that jazz was so popular because when you was a child, jazz was the, the soundtrack of a lot of cartoons. So you had that in your orientation of jazz, you know, it wasn't anything else. So therefore, jazz really took off. You know, uh, because that was the basis for a lot of, of, of cartoons. Well, it was the same thing. These cartoons are delivering messages and stuff like that. You know, when you have a, a, a kid kissing a, a an animal, you know what I mean? Then you see how that goes. Ah. Okay, that's the wrap up for that. Oh, one more, one more tiny wrap up. So, as you may or may not know, because of my research, I'm, I'm not a money person, but because of my research, I have to get into this crypto space just to look at it. Well, um, um, South Africa just, uh, I think in August, they just got whatever they got to get crypto. But the main uh, thing, the, the main thing between uh, the crypto going from the blockchain to the bank or vice versa, whatever, is a thing called Luno. And, and Luno was a reasonable rate, but now it's like, trip, it's like it really charge a lot of money now. So, so, so now they're trying to take money to, to get rid of the banks, but now they're replacing the banks with this, these kind of things and ripping them off. So we've got to figure, figure this thing out. You know what I mean? I know if you stay on the blockchain, you know I mean? You don't go convert to, to, to your bet, to, a, uh, you know, to, to RANDs or whatever your, your, your currency is, then basically your blockchain remains the same and your Bitcoin remains the same. But, uh, so you don't have to go through Luno to do that, you know, just to put your money on, into Bitcoin, whatever, whatever coin you, you, you choose. If you have, you have to have a wallet, you know what I mean? So please get your, get your, get your wallet. If you know, even if you don't want to do any of this stuff, just, just register and get a, get a wallet just in case somebody wants to give you some, some coins and some tokens and you have it. But um, I bring up the say so, uh, to, to say uh, that this is, you know, this is, this, the system is going to keep on being gained for at least the next two, five years. You know, people trying to hustle, hustle, hustle. There's going to be a lot of scams. So you got to be very careful and do your, what they call due diligence. You know, do your research on this. And one of the things also coming to tax season in the United States, one of the things you have to really, really understand is that as long as stuff is on the blockchain, then you're not sort of taxable. But as soon as you move it off and you start using it, then that's like, you, you know, you'll be taxed for that. So you have to understand that. Don't just think you can't pay taxes. And even when you file, I guess um, there must be some way you have to, when you file, you have to say that you have, you know, uh, 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 you know, cryptocurrency. I'm not sure about that. But what I'm trying to say is get, get some really good advice, you know, uh, a certified public accountant, whatever, you know, when you're going through this new stuff, especially if you get into this investment space, because this, these tokens, this cryptocurrency is actually investment. You know, so that's it. Sorry to be so long, but that's the way it goes sometimes with me, T, from the Pattersons, taking the trains to bed, letting you know what I only suspect.